Good morning. Welcome back to Breakfast Television. Happy Tuesday. Uh, we are starting off our day with some slick conditions. That means a slower drive than usual, but some good news coming from the westbound Gardner where we did have earlier problems. Westbound Gardner, west of Jarvis, the left lane, it was blocked with some ponding. We also had some uh, ponding on the eastbound Gardner as well, but as you can see, that ponding has been cleared up by Toronto Transportation and things are relatively back to moving quite smoothly. Still looking at some minor delays on the westbound Gardner, which is to the right, and uh, that's just from west of the Don Valley Parkway. Speaking of the DVP, uh, you'll find it to be a slow go southbound 404 DVP heavy from south of Davis to south of Mulock and we're also looking at delays from Shepherd to about south of Lawrence but as we head closer to the Gardner things are picking up heading on to the Gardner but of course then you run into that jam up where we did have some problems. Hey dads don't miss Datitude the parenting podcast by dads for dads join Vic LaRusso and Al Del Bene for Datitude visit globalstorynetwork.com that's a look at your slick drive. Now, Frankie, let's take a look at what you got going on. Yeah, I was just checking on some of the airports to see if any of the rain impacting, and it's not. Uh, Pearson, Billy Bishop, green on the board. Uh, 16 today is your temperature in New York City if you're traveling there. If you're traveling to Montreal or Ottawa today, make sure you pack an umbrella. Here in Toronto, you need an umbrella this morning. We've been seeing some of that wet weather already push its way through. As we can take a look at the future forecast, we'll have a little bit of another big round at around 8 to 8.30. By the time we see the new hour we still going to need that umbrella but after about three o'clock it starts to push its way out towards the east in behind it some scattered showers up towards cottage country possibly into Barrie later on this evening but that looks like dry conditions but I should warn you through the afternoon what you will see is the wind pick up 30 to 50 kilometers per hour out of the southwest in terms of temperatures we're pretty warm already this morning we're at 14 we're at 10 this morning into Windsor we have temperatures of about nine up through uh, Ottawa this morning 12 into Muskoka a day I'm high going to be about 15. We're frost free over the next several nights up until Friday night. Friday night into Saturday, the potential of frost. Saturday looks nice and clear. Risk of some showers as we work away late on Sunday into Monday. So once again for today, umbrella this morning, windy this afternoon, a high 15. Let's look at your seven day forecast. Okay, the makeup in Ottawa will look uh, quite a bit different on the heels of yesterday's election, but the makeup of Toronto and a lot of the GTA going to remain the same. Let's get live to our Tammy Sutherland with what some local voters are saying the day after Tammy and we saw the map, you know, 2015 Toronto lit up in red. Fast forward 2019 lit up in red again. <laughs> Yeah, it is the same, Mel. So all 25 seats here in Toronto went Liberal red again last night. As you mentioned, a big repeat of the 2015 election as Justin Trudeau was able to win a minority government under the Liberals. When it comes to the seats and the breakdown, he has a pretty strong minority with 157 seats. The Conservatives under Andrew Scheer with 121 seats. The Bloc Québécois stunning folks with 32 seats. Back to uh, uh, official party status for them. The NDP, 24 seats. The Greens with three and one independent. That is Jody Wilson-Raybould, who was elected as an independent. So it is very likely that the Trudeau government, even though it's a minority, can work with the NDP, let's say, so that they can continue to govern uh, when it comes to the next four years, rather than going back to uh, the ballot boxes uh, shorter than that, in a, in a shorter term than that. And this is despite the SNC Lavalin scandal, the blackface controversy. Justin Trudeau is the Prime Minister once again, and Toronto voters who we spoke to say that they hope that the Liberals will be able to bring a little more to Toronto. Well, hopefully they're talking about the taxes, so I'm hoping they're gonna cut for those mid classes, not with the um, the rich ones, right? So I'm hoping he will do better job this time. I don't know. There's a lot of factors that uh, go into that, whether it be uh, how they work with Mayor Tory, how they work with the PC government. We'll see. So we need more low-income housing. We need more help for the homeless. We need more of everything, including taxing the rich. And I've been rich before. When you're rich, you can afford to lose half of it and still be rich. And coming up just after the 7 o'clock hour here on BT, Mayor John Tory will be joining us to talk about how City Hall will be able to work with the Liberals. Mel, I'll send it back to you. Tammy, thank you so much. It's interesting to hear what uh, Torontonians are saying. Appreciate that. We'll check in with you shortly. And she did mention there about a high-profile candidate out west in B.C. Of course, we're talking Jody Wilson-Raybould heading back to Ottawa, pulling off a very rare feat of winning as an independent. Tonight is different. Tonight, we accomplished 
together something extraordinary. We accomplished showing Ottawa, showing our political process that independent, strong voices matter and that we can do politics differently. And Wilson Raybould narrowly re-elected in Vancouver Granville with 30% of the vote. The former justice minister going independent after quitting the Trudeau cabinet over the SNC Laplin scandal. Now Jane Philpott did the same, also running as an independent, but she was defeated by Liberal Helena Jasek in Markham Stouffville.